Okay, from the preceding, we have flux 2k prime i times the natural log of a plus b over b. Uh, continuing the last situation, if we pull this loop away from the x-axis at velocity v, then what is uh, the flux? First of all, what's the flux uh, when it's at position y, when its distance from here to here is y, and what's the induced voltage, which would be the rate of change of the magnetic flux. First of all, if the distance is y, I'm going to go ahead and change this b to y, and I consider this to be what varies with v, so that my expression for the flux becomes this. Okay, so now, uh, this is the flux when you're at distance y. That's very simple. Um, what if you're moving also at velocity v? At what rate is the flux changing? Well, that would be your derivative of your flux with respect to time. Okay? So think about that for a second. Um, I've given you a second to think about it. Hopefully you've paused and done so. Okay. So uh, what's varying here? Uh, I is not varying, k prime is a universal constant. A, the side, length of a side here, doesn't vary. The only thing that's varying is your distance y from the current source, okay, from the x-axis in this case. So that the only thing we have to take a derivative of in taking this derivative is the y. So we're going to get 2k prime i times the derivative with respect to t of the natural log of a plus y over y. Now you notice I used absolute values here. I didn't use them over here, and I didn't use them here. Uh, all these quantities are positives. The absolute value really wasn't necessary. Uh, we didn't use it in the first place because it was necessary. I wrote it here out of habit and didn't bother to change it. But I've gone back to parentheses here. So we don't have to worry about the absolute value. Okay, well, what's the derivative with respect to t of this natural log? You should think about that. I'm going to go ahead and write it out. Okay, the first step in taking this derivative is to recognize that you have a chain here, a natural log of a plus y over y. Uh, the inner function is the a plus y over y, which itself has a derivative we haven't determined. Uh, and then the function is a natural log, and you should understand then that the derivative is going to be the derivative of the inside function, the a plus y over y, and then because of the natural log divided by the a plus y over y. So here it is. Now, uh, we've got everything except the derivative of this a plus y over y, the derivative with respect to t. So see if you can make some progress on that. Okay, I would uh, go to the quotient rule to take this derivative. And again, remember that y is the only thing that has a change, so y is the only thing that we need to take a derivative of. Um, it's going to be, uh, and now I'm going to switch to using primes instead of writing out the d, dt. It's a little neater. And we understand that prime means derivative with respect to time. Uh, so we have what? The derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator divided by the square of the denominator. So uh, what do we do with this? Now, what's y prime? And, uh, you know. It should be clear that the derivative of a plus y prime is just the derivative of y prime, the a being a constant, its derivative is zero. So we're going to get uh, y prime y here, and we're going to get something I don't like the looks of here, which is going to be a y y prime. We're going to get zero, and we know that isn't right, so see if you can see what went wrong here, and I'll do the same. Took me a minute. Hope you saw it close, uh, quicker than I did. Okay, well, if I actually write it out, I'm not going to have that problem. Um, this is going to equal first our 2k prime i y over a plus y. And then it's going to be times what? Uh, here we're going to get a y prime y. And then it's minus 
a plus y times y y prime. So yeah, we get a y y prime here, and it'll be negative. But we also get an a y prime. So we get minus a y prime minus y y prime divided by y squared. And that comes out rather simply as to k prime i over a plus y. I'm leaving this y out for a moment because I'm going to divide this by the y squared here. But then I'm going to, yeah, okay, so it's going to be times uh, negative a y prime over y, the y squared being divided by the y here. So that's 2k prime i with a negative, and I'm being a little loose with negative signs here, orientation of this loop and so forth. Um, and I'll actually go back and talk about that, but I didn't want to confuse the calculation um, yet. So uh, it's going to be this over y times a plus y. And we're going to have an a out here. So I'm going to sneak that a in here. And I've just got this as a multiple of y prime. Now, we haven't done anything yet with y prime. You want to tell me what y prime is? OK, well, you think about it for a minute. Pause if necessary. Uh, this thing's moving with velocity v in the distance away from the source. Y is the distance of this edge of the source away from the source. So that Y prime, the rate of change of the Y, is just equal to the V. So now we have the expression negative 2A K prime I over Y times A plus Y times V. That's our rate of change of flux, and that's going to be equal to our EMF. Now, how do we interpret this function? Okay. Well, first of all, what varies in this expression? Well, what varies is y. v is constant. Of course, we could let v be a function of t, and we get a more complicated expression, uh, maybe a little harder to analyze. Uh, but it would be a perfectly reasonable expression if, uh, if v does change. Um, but what we have is basically then a function of y. y is the one thing that in the original statement of the problem varies. So what happens as y uh, decreases towards 0 is, in other words, as the loop approaches the wire or as y approaches infinity as the loop moves away from the wire or uh, in between, because there's kind of a transition between being close to the wire and being far from the wire in the way we interpret this denominator here, y times a plus y. Okay, so depending on your analytical skills from pre-calculus, probably calculus, uh, what can you do to analyze this to get a feel for how this EMF is going to change as this thing moves away from the wire? I'm not going to talk about that in the rest of this video. I'll come back and talk about it in a quick summary video because it's a little more advanced. You want to give that some thought because right there is the important uh, part of the result, your interpretation of it.